368% increase in traffic, and this website is now making $15,000 per month instead of 2,000. And it only took six months to get there. In this video, I'm gonna teach you the SEO tactics that got these gains step-by-step step so you can create your own glorious traffic boner that explodes out the top of your monitor. Sorry, that was a bit graphic. If we haven't met before, I'm Matt Diggity, founder of Diggity Marketing, LeadSpring, the Affiliate Lab, the Chiang Mai SEO Conference, and the International SEO Agency, The Search Initiative. You're about to learn how to land the best links attainable with the strategy called digital PR, how to dominate the informational search queries that actually lead to more revenue, how to give your website a sexy UX overhaul, and a technical SEO checklist that'll make you want to slap your mama. Now, if you like content like this, let me know by slapping that like button. For the mere cost of a like button slapping, you'll be able to support the noble cause of making the YouTube algorithm happy. This not only helps my video, but lets YouTube know that you want to see more SEO content like this. Now let's start to look at the project itself and see what I was up against. Six months ago, a customer came to my agency, The Search Initiative, with a big problem. They produce and sell tobacco-free nicotine alternatives. But when they reached out, they had nearly zero online presence, and they were up against a ball rock of a company that had already monopolized the market. Imagine being a new soda startup and you're supposed to compete against um, you know, Coke. And guess who already ranked for those lucrative keywords? Yes, the goddamn Balrog. But I had a plan. It's something that I do all the time to successfully compete in the health niche against DR92 Healthline or any of the Parasite SEO newspaper sites, <clears throat> Outlook and yeah, that Google doesn't seem to have a solution for. You can always target low competition informational content to get traffic to your site in the first place, but then use UX and conversion hacks to direct them to your highest converting offers. And don't worry, I'll show you how to do that later. But for now, let's jump into one of the most highly requested tactics from you viewers, and that's digital PR. When you create newsworthy stories, pitch them to journalists, and get links on the best, typically out of reach, websites on the internet. What does that look like? Now, obviously I can't expose my client, but if you want some examples, check out the survey I conducted on the most influential tech companies of the 21st century. Pornhub came in third. <laughs> yeah, boy. Now check out all these backlinks that are attracted with DR50 and above. What's this one here at the top? New York Times? Oh my God, is that good? Here's another article detailing some quick research performed on the most fine businesses of all time. This one is still picking up new links. When Google's Gary Ilyas said that Eat is quote, largely based on links, he specifically mentioned sites like the Washington Post as an example. The Washington Post is what's known as a seed site, a site that Google manually picked to be one of the most trusted sites on the internet. If you get a link from a seed site, that's one of the best things that can happen to you online, aside from getting a billion dollars from a Nigerian prince. And it just turns out that digital PR is about the only chance you have to get those seed site links. Here's how you do it. Step one, the ideation phase. You want to come up with a topic that is related to your niche, but very compelling. Something shareable that seed sites would love to post up. And the trendier it is to a currently viral topic, the better. What are some recent viral events that have come up lately? Remember when Zuck and Elon started talking about a cage fight? Well, if I had a gambling website, I'd be all over making an odds table on who would win and I'd be pitching every journalist on the planet. Or remember when Oppenheimer and Barbie released on the same weekend creating the Barbenheimer meme? You know what? I have no idea how I'd turn this into an article. But you know who does? ChatGPT. The Oppenheimer movie and the Barbie movie were recently released on the same weekend. How could I have turned this viral event into an article that could be used for digital PR? Give me five potential titles of my article that would go on a fitness website. Number four would work for sure. You could whip up an article teaching exercises like atomic abs, Barbie burpees, and the constant plank. Get it? Plank's constant? Haha, <laughs> whatever. Also, you could go the research route and come up with a data study or survey. Research always does well, especially and unfortunately when there's a negative spin to it. That was the angle I was going for with the big business find study, which the DR85 Scotsman picked up with their name and shame headline, who paid the largest criminal fine in history and why. Other types of digital PR pieces include surveys, industry reports, expert opinions, and case studies. For our client, coming up with the story was easy because most people don't know that non-vape, tobacco-free, nicotine alternatives actually exist. So it was just a matter of finding journalists who talk about health but didn't already know about this product. A great tool you can use is Prowly. It lets you search for journalists based on their location, language, topic, and media type. If you wanted to find English-speaking food journalists in the UK, you'd fill out their search form like this. Then you'd end up with a bunch of results with email addresses and social media profiles. An alternative to Prowly is Muckrack, which is what my buddy Ferry at the digital PR agency Search Intelligence likes. You can also just search manually like a caveman if you like. For example, if you wanted to get on the Telegram, 
Telegraph, do a site colon telegraph.co.uk in title food to find their food category. Now here's all the William Sitwell, Rob Crossens, and Diana Henrys that your little heart could desire. Now once you successfully stalk them and secured their email addresses, it's time to pitch them your article. Here's some rules of thumb. Have a clear subject line, be personal, explain why your content is relevant to them. For example, if I surveyed each state in a study, I'd tease out the stats that I found for that journalist's particular state. Be as brief as you can and include a press release, something that they could simply copy and paste and get up on their website as soon as possible. I have a video coming up on just digital PR in which I'll share some journalist outreach templates. So be sure to subscribe so you don't miss it. That said, digital PR is a tricky process that takes effort away from your actual SEO tasks which is why I usually outsource to Ferry and the incredible team at searchintelligence.co.uk. All right, now remember when I told you that the commercial keywords were locked down by a mythical Balrog? Let me show you how I Gandalf the shit out of this. All websites should start with producing low competition, informational type content. But don't for a second start to think that you can't make money off it. You just need to use that content to funnel readers into your actual money-making content. For example, this article ranks at the top of Google for the informational keyword, learn affiliate marketing. And what does my article do? It teaches you how to learn affiliate marketing, but it also introduces you to my course, The Affiliate Lab. To pull this off, you need to marry informational content production with UX design. Let's start with the former. The first step in a low competition informational content strategy that will get results is to find easy info keywords that will bring good traffic. Here's one of my absolute favorite ways to get these. Open Ahrefs Content Explorer and you're gonna type in the broadest keyword possible that pertains to your niche, like cats. Over to the right, you're gonna select in title. I want a list of articles that have the word cats in the title. Next, open up more filters and you wanna set page traffic value greater than 50, referring domains at a maximum of five and a domain rating maximum of 50. What this is gonna do is give you a list of actual articles on the internet that pull decent traffic and exist on sites that don't have much going on in terms of backlinks. Okay, well, here's a bunch of saucy Doja Cat articles that you might wanna bookmark for later, but keep your eye on the prize. This freaking seven reasons why your cat is sneezing article pulls 16,000 visitors per month and lives on a DR7 website, which basically means it's brand new and has zero links pointing to it. Whoa. Is this the most valuable traffic in the world? Bro, in the world of SEO, any traffic is valuable. There's an SEO theory called avalanche that can be found on Builder Society. The idea is that certain keywords are impossible to rank for unless you have a certain level of traffic already. There's tiers. For example, cat sneezing might be a level zero difficulty keyword, but ranking for it will immediately unlock level 500 keywords because the 16,000 monthly visits that the other new website gets equates to 533 visitors per day. <laughs> Very nice. Then you can go for more lucrative keywords like best cat food or the gold mine, how to shave a cat. Now, what's the best way to actually produce an article that has the highest chance to succeed in today's algorithm? You know how you search for something like best hotels in Tokyo and every single one of the articles is exactly the same? They're all listicles of the 30 best, 20 best, 19 best hotels in Tokyo. The only difference is the number. That's because Google is not a general AI. It doesn't really know which are the best hotels. So if you write an article about the best hotels in Tokyo, it has no idea if you did a good job. But what it can do is compare your article to the other top ranking articles to see if yours is similar enough and belongs there. So the name of the game is to reverse engineer page one, but do better. Now there's a lot to this, but here's the 80-20 on the goofy ass keyword, why do cats sneeze? Open up the top ranking article and scroll down until you see these big H2 headings. Causes of sneezing in cats, nose tickle, this is ridiculous, and so forth. This makes up the outline structure of the article that Google thought was good enough to place at the top of their results. You can use the free plugin detail to see all these in one shot. Notice how the H2 infections is broken down into H3s like viral and bacterial infections. Note the structure down. Then you're gonna do the same thing for the article in the second position on Google and the number three article. And when it's time to make your article outline, you combine all the best of the top ranking articles so yours can be a superset of complete information. Then you can determine how long you need to write your article based on the average of the top three articles as well. Detail will pick that up for you too. Now when it's time to get writing, you wanna use an on-site optimization tool like Surfer. It also looks at the top ranking articles to determine what heading structure they use, the proper word count, but most importantly, what critical entities, words, and phrases need to be in your content and at what frequencies. It satisfies Google's natural language processing algorithms and it's literally an SEO cheat code. And if you're too lazy to write, their AI writer is best in class. Bear in mind, I'm an investor in Surfer, so my opinion is colored, but I stand by my statements nonetheless. 
less. Now, by just creating a master outline and optimizing with Surfer, that's gonna be more than enough to rank for the mega easy cat sneezing keywords. But for the more competitive stuff, make sure to check out my video called How to Write Content That Ranks Number One on Google After You Finish Here. Link in the description. Okay, so now you got all this informational traffic coming to your website. How can you optimize your design and UX to funnel that traffic into your money generating content? I got four answers for you. Let's go back to my Learn Affiliate Marketing article that ranks at the top of Google. The absolute most effective way to convert info traffic into money are these inline call to action buttons. These are buttons smack in the middle of your content. If you click mine, it'll take you to a webinar where you can learn more about my course, The Affiliate Lab. Similarly, you could have an informational article about how to build a website. And then in the section about hosting, you could have a big fat button that says top three hosting companies for small businesses. Don't sleep on inline call to actions. When implemented correctly, they make up a majority of clicks from any given page. It drives me insane that a how to fix a paintball gun article would litter their content with graphical display ads like this that are gonna earn less than a penny per view, but not try to funnel their reader into buying an actual reliable paintball gun, which their reader is already looking Looking for. Next, you can use contextual linking to funnel people to your commercial content, but steal a tactic from the best in the business, the New York Times Wirecutter. Check out their article on the best hair clippers. Tell me if you notice something odd. Yep, that's right. All the links in red will make them money, and all the links in black don't make them money. And guess who stole this idea? You bet your ass I did. And when I ran the tests, I found that the red links improved click-through rate from the typical blue baseline by 16%, and the black links reduced clicks by 27%. If you wanna control where your readers go, like I said, it's all about UX. Going back to the same article, notice what happens when you scroll down the page. Yes, a big graphic is gonna follow you down to the bottom, inviting you to get a free audit from my agency. This is called a sticky sidebar widget, and it's yet another technique to get users to your money content. And then we have the related posts or the read this next section that nearly every site has, including Healthline. I use this custom related post plugin, which will allow me to force my money generating content to the top of the suggested posts. The final boss that our client needed to beat were some technical SEO issues that most people have but hardly address. The first was a messy URL structure that was tripping up both the Google bot and their users. Now get your notepad out for a fire hose guide to URLs. Keep your URLs concise and meaningful. Shorter URLs are recommended as they don't get cut off in the SERPs and users are more likely to remember them. Keyword optimize, include the main keyword that you wanna rank your page for. This tells Google that you're relevant to it and the actual URL, the highest importance real estate for on-site optimization. Use hyphens to separate words, not underscores. Use subfolders to create a logical hierarchy. Avoid unnecessary information in your URLs. Avoid using unnecessary parameters. I'm looking at you e-commerce sites and use lowercase letters. After we fixed the URLs, we noticed that the site was slow, which is a big no-no for Google, but they had everything set up correctly. Good host a solid content display network, and decent caching. But what they did lack was proper image optimization. If you're displaying a 300 by 400 image on your site, it's a waste of resources to actually load a 3000 by 4000 100 megabyte image and then resize it in the browser. My favorite image compression plugin is Smush, which is gonna shrink your images without a loss in quality. You should also lazy load your images, which defers their loading until the user actually needs to interact with them. Apart from images, there's also minification, which is the process of reducing the amount of necessary code in your CSS and Java files. Here's an example of some JavaScript code before minification, and here's what it looked like after. We take care of both the lazy loading and the minification for our clients when necessary. After all was said and done, we were able to grow this underdog's website's traffic from 1.6 to 7.7K visitors per month for a 368% increase, which resulted in them now being profitable at five figures per month, and that's just the start. If you'd like us to do this for you, head on over to the search initiative and use the format the bottom for a free audit. We'd be happy to take a look at your business and let you know what we can do for you.